Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for our fourth webinar in the Job Search Essentials series. My name is Desiree Williams and I serve AKSI as the Digital Education Coordinator and I will be producing this webcast. Now before we get into the presentation, let's go over the web-based features available to you. This webinar will be advanced remotely, but at the bottom of your screen, there are multiple application widgets you can use throughout the program. If you're watching this webinar via a mobile device, you may need to scroll down or over on your screen to see the widgets. Additionally, every window on your screen can be resized and moved to fit your needs. A copy of the slideshow and other additional resources are available in the green widget, the resource list widget. The group chat is available for you to interact with other attendees and the presenters during the presentation. When posting, it will share your first name and your last initial, so please share your chapter and university as well. If you have any technical difficulties, go ahead and click on the Help widget with the question mark icon. And lastly, if you have a question throughout the program, please launch the Q&A widget to submit that. All questions will be discussed at the end of the program with our presenter. Now we know the job search process can be daunting, especially as a graduating senior or recent grad, but the process itself is only a few steps. Prepare your materials, search for open positions, apply, interview, and accept an offer. In our previous webinars in the series, we explored some tips for creating resumes and cover letters, searching and applying for those positions, and then correct interview behaviors. Today we'll focus on building your network, which kind of fits into the whole process at many different points. If you guys are looking for any more information, be sure to check out our other webinars in the Job Search Essentials series. So today we're talking about networking, and it's often said that the best way to get a job is through networking, but how do you do it? So during this webinar, we'll discuss the importance of networking and really how to break out of your shell to start building those relationships with others. For our program today, Mike Callahan will present. Mike is the director for the College of Business Internship Career Planning and Development Program at the University of Michigan Dearborn. In this role, he works with employers to develop challenging internship and job placement opportunities for graduate and undergraduate students in the College of Business, and then he works with those students to help them develop the skills and knowledge, track record, and relationship skills necessary to launch their careers. He's also on the adjunct faculty staff and teaches career planning and development courses. Mike has been in this position since July of 2005. Hi, everybody. I'm really happy to have the opportunity to chat with you a little bit today about uh, networking. You know, the, the reality of what we're faced in, in the job market today is that uh, very few jobs are found by people putting their resumes out there and hoping somebody gives them a job. You've got to make connections. And there, it's a lot more than just finding a job. There's a lot of really strong benefits that come out of networking, so it's an important skill to develop, and, and hopefully we'll point out some things for you today that can kind of help you with that. Uh, but I really encourage you to embrace this idea and purposefully take the challenge to get out and do some, do some, do a lot of networking. If you're already network, continue and do more of it. You know, it gives you the chance to find mentors, find people in your field. Maybe it will be with the company you're working with, maybe it isn't, but it's great. It's just so powerful to be able to kick around ideas with somebody else as a mentor. And so networking, networking will help you do that. You're going to have the opportunity to talk to someone uh, off script and be able to interact, interact with them and engage with them and listen to them and, and respond. So it's really going to build your, your speaking skills. It really gives you a chance to refine your goals. You know, you may go into a networking event and say that you want to do a digital marketing kind of opportunity and you get in there and you start talking to people and you find out that there's different kinds of fields or maybe it's a different industry or maybe it's a different scope or big companies, little companies, whatever. So it gives you a chance to really continue to refine your goals and you're going to be doing that the rest of your life because jobs change, things change, opportunities change and you want to be able to continue to refine them and never get locked into one specific way to, to do things. And then lastly, it definitely opens up opportunities. Go in with an inquisitive mind. Ask people what they're doing. Ask them about what they're involved in. And that will really give you the chance to, uh, to, to learn about new opportunities that are out there. So we've talked a little bit about you know, why it's important to network. So how do I go about networking? What do I do? Go, go to the... Go to the web and look at for networking opportunities? Well, actually, that's probably a good idea. 
But let me give you some specific ways to, to do that. One is through alumni associations. Uh, within your campus, there is, there's probably going to be an alumni office. There may be alumni associations that you connect with. They may have events that they're doing. The alumni love to connect with their, with their colleges. So take advantage and plug into these alumni associations and lots of good networking opportunities in that in, in, in environment. Also just general networking events. Um, recognize the chambers of commerce and other kinds of professional organizations where you live. They hold a lot of networking events. Those organizations exist to help facilitate and get, pe getting people together. So do get online. Look at look up these uh, the chambers of commerce and, and that sort of thing and look for, for networking events within that context. Also, there may be some uh, ma magazine articles or uh, news local newspapers that list different kinds of networking events. So take an advantage of that. Thirdly, professional organizations, uh, whether it's SHRM or whether it's uh, PMI or Society of Automotive Engineers or all these different kinds of professional organizations exist to help facilitate dialogue between their members. So I really encourage you to look into those, maybe join one. You can get in as a student and they're really inexpensive and they have frequent sessions and meetings that uh, where they're getting together and networking. It's a great way to build your network, so seek those out. LinkedIn, have a strong LinkedIn profile. And don't make your profile just, I'm looking for a job. Talk about, in your profile, the, the value that you bring, what you're, what you're looking for, and then make those connections. Join, there's alumni associations within your LinkedIn. Make connections, reach out to people. But there's a lot of LinkedIn uh, uh, opportunities to expand your network. And then lastly, informational interviews. Now, informational interviews, when you reach out to somebody and say, what does it take for me to be successful in your company or in your industry or in your environment? It is not reaching out and saying, do you know anybody who's hiring? That's not what an informational interview is, and so don't do that. What, what you want to do when you're reaching out to informational interviews is uh, ask, you know, can I buy you a cup of coffee, sit down, I want to uh, pick your brain a little bit and find out what it takes to be successful in your environment. Uh, they're very powerful. You can open up a lot of doors that way. It may lead to job opportunities, but it will, at a minimum, give you the chance to build one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of uh, network relationships. So there's a lot of opportunities to do it. And I think the bottom line that I would challenge you to do is to say, okay, I'm going to do a certain number of these each month. Maybe it's just a couple. Do what you can, don't, don't overcommit. Do what you can handle. But make some personal commitments and say, I'm going to go to a professional organization meeting next month. And then do it and make that, make that connection. So I hope you're able to, to pursue that. So let's do a little uh, activity here. Uh, say you've decided to go to a networking party and you walk in the room and this is what you see. There's an uh, older gentleman in front of you that uh, looks like he's going to get a sandwich. There's a couple guys off to the left there in business suits that are looking like they're, uh, they're approachable. There's a guy over here on the right that's handing out a bunch of business cards. There's a group in the back that are high-fiving and, and having a good old time. And there's three people over on the side that are busy on their, uh, on their cell phones. So I have a question to you, and the question is simply, if you could only talk to one person, who would you talk to? And when I use this in my class, quite often the people will say, well, they'll talk to the, to the person handing out business cards because he's real easy to talk to. And the point of is uh, that's possible, but he's probably trying to sell something, so maybe he's not going to be the first best person for you to to uh, make a connection with, unless you want to buy some life insurance. The uh, the elderly gentleman, he's good to talk to. He's he's got probably got lots of good experience. He will welcome you, so it's great to talk to him. Those two guys in the suits, uh, notice the way they're standing, and when you see people standing open faced like that. They're welcoming people. That's a, that's a body language that you want to pick up on. If they don't want to talk to anybody, they're going to be closed down and just looking at each other. So to go to try to break into it, if they're looking at each other directly, is going to be hard. But when they're open, they're saying, come talk to me. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to go in back. They look like that's a fun group and they're having fun. The only disadvantage of, of trying to get back there is that they might be uh, celebrating 
uh, a, a football win of the, the opposing team from your college or something. It might be a group that you don't uh, necessarily fit into, so you're going to feel kind of awkward trying to get in. So that's kind of a that's that's a risky move, but you could do it if you hear that they're really talking about something that you like. What a lot of people miss, though, is the people on the cell phone. And they look at that and say, well, they're busy on a cell phone. And my question to you is, they're at a networking event, and they're bored because they're on their cell phones. I do, I do this a lot when I go to networking events. I see people in the corner that are bored that are on their cell phone. I walk up and talk to them and say, hi, you know, how you doing? And you become their hero. It's like, hi, and they really warm up to you. So don't just... Don't miss that. That's a kind of a golden opportunity when you, when you go to networking events. So the point is, there's a lot of different connections that you can make. Read the body language. Pay attention to making a connection. And find the people that when you walk up to them, you're going to be their hero by, by uh, rescuing them. Uh, there's a lot of good ways that you can, that you can make some nice connections there with, uh, with the people in the room. So I want to take a minute here and explain a concept to you that I'm sure you've heard of, and it's called an elevator pitch. And the idea of an elevator pitch is you get on an elevator at the top floor with one of the senior executives of a firm, and that person says, tell me about yourself, and you've got 30 seconds to, to tell them before the elevator doors are going to open, and you'll never see that person again. So you want to, you want to have something that's valuable and, you, and you, that you can really get your point across. And there's really three things that, are, that you want to work into your elevator pitch. First is who are you, and that's really your personal brand. That's 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 what you're all about. That's that's your heart and soul. That's 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 what makes you tick. That's you want to be able to talk about that. Why? Uh, what are you looking for? Is really you're looking for opportunity where you can bring value to a, a given company. So it's not per se just what you want. It's how can you bring value to them. So you want to be able to talk about you might be a great problem solver, you might be a great project manager, you might be a great statistician, whatever it is, you want to talk about the kinds of things that you're really good for and that you're looking for those kinds of opportunities. And then lastly, why should they care? What value do they get out of what you can bring? What opportunity are you going to address? What do you know about that company? What do you know? That, wh why, why do they care? Why will they want to, to hire you or follow up with you? Uh, you're never going to get somebody necessarily to hire you in the elevator. What you're going to get is their business card with an invitation to come see them for an informational interview or something like that. So set your expectation. But if you can hit them with who you are, your brand, what are you looking for in terms of value proposition that you can bring to that in potential employer, and then why do they care? What is that underserved need? What is that opportunity that, you're, that you can address that they have a real need for? you're going to get that, uh, that follow-up call. So that's uh, take advantage of a practice. Practice your elevator pitch in the mirror. It sounds cheesy the first few times you do it, um, but once you get it and it flows off, uh, off the tip of your tongue, you'll, you'll use it a lot. So here's some additional things to consider uh, in preparing for your, your networking. First off, have a business card. You all need to have a business card. If you don't have one, get one. You can get one and have a KSI logo on it, or you can get one with your university logo, and you don't have to have a formal job title. It can say, student, that's okay. It is what you are. If you've got a good job title to put, that's fine, but it, you don't have to have a job title, but you should have a business card. Because when you go to a networking event, people exchange business cards, and if you don't have one, you're sitting there with nothing to give. So get, get your business card. One of the things I also coach students on the, on the business card is if you have uh, a, a sense for your elevator pitch, for that value proposition, for what you are. You might have a logo that describes that or some kind of visual image in addition to the logo of your school or AKSI. Put that on the card too. I, I use a triangle and it's on the back of my card and I use it as a visual aid when I'm talking about what I do. So think about that. You don't have to have that, of course, but definitely you want to have a business card. Uh, resume. You're not using a resume at a networking event, but it sure doesn't hurt to have it handy because somebody may say, give me your resume. So be sure you got a nice, tight, well-prepared resume. You want to be carrying those around all the time because you never know who's asking for them. But mostly, most of the time in networking events, they're not going to they're gonna, not gonna want your resume. They're going to want the business card and then follow up, but have the resume uh, by all means. And then lastly, LinkedIn. Make sure you got a good LinkedIn uh, profile. There's a great checklist out uh, on LinkedIn 
on the on the main website that uh, is for students to create a LinkedIn profile. I'd follow that checklist. It's really good. You want to have a nice uh, headshot. Don't have a grainy headshot that's cropped from a wedding picture that was taken five years ago and and you were out, you were part of the wedding party or something. Have a nice headshot where they can see you. Have a tagline that says something about your value. This one that we've got here, marketing professional and servant leader. And it doesn't say I'm looking for an internship. It says something about about the the specific individual. You want to have a, a mission statement or a brief statement. That's kind of that second part underneath there is the elevator pitch. If you've worked on your elevator pitch, you have that. And then there's other things to put into the LinkedIn. So take a look at that checklist. Anybody that's connecting with you, they go to a networking event, they're going to go home, they're going to look you up on, on LinkedIn. And I'm happy if you want to look me up on LinkedIn and even connect with me. I like to connect with people, so uh, feel free to, to check me out on LinkedIn, and hopefully you'll see that, uh, that I'm following that, that same advice by having my value proposition and, and everything out there. But anyway, those are some important things to do. Have the LinkedIn ready. Prepare with business cards. And one more thing on the business cards. Have them in the same pocket so that when you're looking for them, you know where to find them. And don't mix the cards you get with your business cards because you'll wind up giving out um, somebody else's business card. So have them in a specific your, a pocket so that when you, can, when you meet somebody, you, you can, you've, got it. you've got it handy and you can get it to them right away. So good luck with, uh, with the rest of those activities. So here's some final tips just to kind of keep in mind. Have some reasonable expectations. You know, I used to uh, go to uh, networking events with my dean, and she always, uh, we kind of had a little game that we played where we'd try to figure out uh, who got the most powerful people's business cards. So we'd go, we'd separate, we'd go collect business cards, and we'd get back and we'd compare who, who, who we met. You may have that kind of thing, uh, competition with your friends. Whatever it is, have some kind of expectation. I'm going to meet three people. Uh, I'm going to find at least one person that uh, I can follow up with. Whatever it is, have some kind of expectation. Don't just go in and talk to people. Have something that you're, that you're striving to attain. Um, don't be afraid to join in the conversation. And also, don't just hang with your friends. A lot of people go to network events and there's three or four people and you, they all hang together. You can talk to those people anytime. Agree before you go to the event that you're going to break up. And maybe you do the business card thing or something else, but separate Talk to the people that are at the event, and then get back together again afterwards and talk about how you did. Don't go as a don't don't go as a pack, and that you're all you're all together. You want to make it a personal kind of thing, an individual thing. Not that you're trying to get away from your friends, but separate. Do your networking, and then get back together again. Take notes. See where somebody makes a comment right on the back of their business card. That's okay. In some cultures, that's disrespectful. So you want to be careful. If you're in 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 Asia, and if you're in Japan, don't do that. Uh, the, the business card there, you hold, you hold it with two hands, it's very sacred, and if you write on the back of it, they're going to figure that you're, uh, you're, giving them a, you're, you're, you're not respecting them. So be careful of whatever environment you have, but in the United States, that's, that's not an issue. And always give them a reason to remember you, something that stands out. That's why I talk about some kind of logo on your business card or a real hard-hitting elevator pitch or something that they're going to remember you. You have to meet somebody at least three or four times before they consistently put the name and the face together. So they're not going to necessarily remember you just from one event. So give them a reason to remember you and, and follow up. Be yourself. Be natural. Don't try to put on airs. It's not going to work. Focus on a few of the key details. Engage. Follow up with those that, uh, connect, that you want to connect with. Check their out. Check out their LinkedIn. Maybe you... Uh, Offer to connect with them on LinkedIn. Maybe you send them a follow-up email and uh, say, you know, I'd love to have you come on campus or would you be available for uh, an informational interview? I'd like to bring a few students by and introduce you or whatever it is, whatever, whatever would make sense. And look for opportunities to serve people. If you find an opportunity, if you're talking to somebody and you know that they're involved in a specific program, maybe they want to get access to the campus. Maybe they want to get access to a different program. Figure out ways to help them, to serve them. You're going to you're going to be making some really good inroads there. And be sure you you, you say their name. That's really an important thing. When they say who they are, say ah, and defer probably to Mr. Callahan or Mrs. Callahan, uh, unless they say, oh no no call me Mike and that's fine. So to so be a little gracious there, but repeat their name and then uh, 
you may, you're making that kind of connection. So it's important. You don't have to worry about all these things. If the more you get natural, it's just going to happen. But get engaged. Separate from your group. Look for ways to connect with people. Look for ways to help them. Look for ways to follow up. Be engaged and be sure that you're, you're having a personal connection with them and you'll do great. Good luck. Great. Thank you so much, Mike, for providing so many great tips and those activities for our viewers to get started with networking. While we give them some time to think of some questions for you, let's go over the key skills that our viewers were exposed to today. By learning to network with others, you will gain experience with oral and written communication, relationship building, and you'll build your confidence. All right, everyone, at this point, we are going to transition to question and answers. As stated earlier, please launch the Q&A widget from the menu doc to submit those questions. If we can't get to your question now during the presentation, we will respond via email later, and this feature will remain open in on-demand viewing. So to get started with our first question, um, to Mike, who should I network with if I don't know what I want to do or where I want to work? That's a pretty common kind of question. It's like, well, where do I go and, and how do I get started? I would approach it from a much, a very general kind of perspective because you never know. I, you know, you may not have any idea where you want to work. So go explore. Uh, go to professional networking events. Don't limit yourself. It'll become obvious as you go to a few. But even when you're talking to somebody, even if you think you want to work in marketing or uh, you know, don't just limit yourself to marketing groups because you, you never know, or e even to give an industry. You might want to work in the auto industry, but so I won't go to network events that have to do with uh, city employees, but that might not be a good idea because they're probably involved in, in doing some stuff. So people are so connected and, 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 and so much networking with, with other people that I wouldn't limit myself. So I just get started and start doing it. And then you're, it's going to get, you're going to get smarter over time and, and maybe zero in a little bit more, but it, it gives you an opportunity to just explore all sorts of possibilities. So keep it open. All right, we'll move on to our second question. You had mentioned both of these in the presentation. Um, so is it better to network in person or online, uh, like sending an email or a LinkedIn request? Well, part of that is is obviously what's available. Uh, in on, in person is always going to be better. You make a personal contact. So if you can meet and connect with someone one-on-one, -on -one, that's the way you want to go. Um, if someone's in a different city, you, you know, you're going to have to reach out to them some way electronically. Um, so take advantage of those opportunities. And, and I do a lot of networking uh, online. It, it, the online for me is more of a supplement. Uh, I've got two things, three things going on right now that I've been networking with someone electronically, but they're follow-ups. I had met, met with them before. We're, I've sent them follow-up LinkedIn email messages. We're talking a little bit of, about stuff, and then we're planning to get back together again uh, soon the next time I'm in the in the city where they live. So I think it, they complement. I would never try to just only do it electronically. Um, it, you got to have personal contact, but use social media and use email to reinforce. Uh, or even to open up the first opportunity, you reach out to an alumni in LinkedIn, and then the next time you're in the city. But go personally. You got to make that personal contact as as much as possible. Yeah, and networking in person can be a little intimidating um, sometimes. So, what tips do you have for someone who may be a little bit on the shy side? That's uh, you know, I, I I'm a little shy myself. I, I get nervous when I'm going. Um, so part of it is just kind of saying, okay, I, I can do this, you know, I can do it, and, and pumping yourself up. But if you've got a couple of uh, uh, tricks in your bag to pull out, it helps. One thing that I do, and I learned this from a professor several years ago, is he would always say, you walk up to somebody and say, what have you done for fun? And everyone kind of laughs at that, especially in a professional environment, because everyone's so busy working, they don't do anything for fun. And then you get into that whole conversation, I'm too busy to have fun. Well, what do you do? Well, I'm a, you know, a chief mucky muck at such and such a company. Wow, that sounds interesting. What, what, what are you guys involved in? And, and you start having that kind of conversation. 
make it there's there's also a real key lesson here is don't worry about making it about yourself make it about the other person show pay attention listen to them lean in pay attention to them and ask about them and what they're doing and you're going to get a lot of great information people love to talk about themselves and so it's not like you're trying to manipulate them or anything but if you just go in and literally say what have you done for fun lately? And and have enough confidence to be able to ask that question because you're kind of making fun of yourself when you when you ask it. Then pe- the people will start talking about it, and you can ask them. Well, tell me more about that. Well, why do you do that? Well, that's interesting. Have you ever thought of this? And look for ways to serve them, and look for ways to make it about them. So that it, 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 I understand being shy, but if you're making it about them, that can really help overcome that that shyness and have some fun in doing it so that's what i would recommend absolutely all right we'll move on to our next question coming from a blue collar work environment where interviews are straightforward and basic how do you answer star or bei interview questions without trying to sell yourself too hard well uh star is um it's such a a common approach. Uh, we teach it here, and, and a lot of schools teach it. Um, and there's even a variation of it that Ford uses called CARD, C-A-R-D, Circumstances, Action, Result, and, and What Would You Do Differently? But you want it to be conversational. You don't want it to just, well, must, you know, to, to be written, to be re, 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 uh, memorized. But you want to hit those four things. And so when somebody's listening to you in the interview, they're looking. They're trying to understand what the situation was. So it's okay to say, well, the, the situation was I did this, and you know my my responsibilities and what I had to do and the tasks that I did was this. You can work those words in, but make it conversational. Don't make it rehearsed or scripted. Uh, and obviously, talk about when when you go to an interview. Be prepared to talk about the kinds of things that you want them to know about you. We go back to that elevator pitch. Know your elevator pitch. And so when you're answering these questions, there are examples of things that you can do that you've done that reinforce that elevator pitch. So if you don't take the time to fix that, to figure out what the elevator pitch is, you're kind of shooting in the dark. So take some time, figure out what your elevator pitch is. What's that sweet spot? What are those key things, value proposition and, and all? And then when you're answering, uh, use STAR. You've got to use that kind of structure because that's what they're looking for. And the, and the final thing I would mention about STAR is a lot of times people don't follow through on the R. They don't talk about the what, so what, what happened as a result of what you did. And the more you can talk about what happened in terms of either how it improved the customer or how it improved the businesses or how it improved the people and the relationship and the organization that you work with, it's it's going to be valuable. So use STAR, keep it conversational, make sure it reflects what your elevator pitch is, and be sure you close with a strong R in terms of impact and and results. Hope that helps. Okay, and kind of on the flip side of that, our next question um, is, what are some great questions you wish people would ask but typically don't, either to a recruiter or to an employee of the company? We wish that who would ask? The students would ask, but they don't? Yes. Was that your question? Yeah. Um, it, it's It's the kinds of questions that are grounded in what does it take to be successful in that in that environment? It's not the questions about, um, you know, is the cafeteria open on Fridays or when what day is casual? Uh, what could we, could we wear casual clothes? The questions that you want to ask have to do with what does it take to be successful in that environment? What how what are the kinds of environment that I'm going to be in? How can I be successful? How can I have an impact? What is it? What is it like? To work in that environment, and um, and to and to understand what they do, that are grounded in some research, that you've you've looked into it, you have an idea of what uh, what that company does, and so how the questions are, how can I help you do better at whatever you're doing? Always approach it from the perspective that any manager probably has too much stuff on his or her plate to.
to do all the things they need to do. And if you come along and, and are able to ask questions about how you can help him or her simplify their life, they're going to respond to that positively. So it's always about value, about what you can do, and how you can help serve somebody else. And so, Mike, once you make that first connection, what are some of the best ways to stay in touch and really develop a relationship with that person? Be purposeful about it. Um, I've got a little checklist that I do, and what I do is each month I, on, I go to my checklist and say, okay, I need to follow up with Joe. I haven't talked to him for a while, and then I reach out to him. So have some kind of systematic approach that you do. And with social media, it's so easy to connect. I literally I, – I, I've, I've got a relationship with a guy who used to be the head of uh, – uh, Kelly Services, and I'm on a first name basis with him, and and he just posted something on LinkedIn, and I'm going to reply uh, later this afternoon, and keep that contact going. It's so easy to do it with social media. So be uh, be active in social media, but also purposeful in terms of identifying. Okay, I'm going to follow up. I'm going to reach out to this person next month, and then do so, and always do it in terms of. You know, let's get together for lunch, or I'm going to be in the, in your building. Uh, would, can I grab you a cup, uh, grab a cup of coffee with you, and let's kind of touch base, make it conversational, make it easy. People love to do that, and it's fun once you're in that in that mode to keep those relationships going. And it's not you're not trying to manipulate anybody. You're not trying to get a bunch of favors or anything lined up. You're just building relationships with people, and you and look for ways to serve them. And if you're doing that, it comes back to you tenfold. That's one thing that I've just learned so much that the more I can, every time I'm meeting with somebody, I'm looking for how I can help him or her, and it comes back. I get I get benefits out of that. And if nothing more, it's just nice to be able to help people. So keep it keep it alive, but have some kind of process. If you don't have a process, you'll you'll forget about people, and then it's all oh boy, it's a year year past, and you haven't even talked to this person. So have some kind of formal process to track it. And kind of expanding on that last question, how much time should you devote to building the relationship before you want to ask for a favor or for some help? That really depends on the individual. It, it, you may meet somebody and they may be right up front and say, hey, let me know how I can help you. I certainly have that, uh, especially if there's some kind of connection through an alumni, through a, a brother, through uh, the school, some kind of connection. Um, they may say that right up front, and if they do, and you can help, and they can help you, then well, you know, I, I, I really could use some help with this, and go ahead and ask it. Uh, there may be others that's going to take longer. One thing, do not do is don't just because you got some somebody's uh, contact info that you that that's the only time you reach out to them. I I have an executive here in town that that really that I talk to about that periodically, and it just it really bothers him. Because there's people that, he's a fairly uh, senior person, and there's people that just reach out to him just because they want something. And, you know, it's like, it, it, that's a lousy way to do that. So um, each each person's going to be different. There's no magic am amount of time. It, instinctively, you're going to know when it's, when, it, when it's okay to do that. Um, the more you've been able to do something for them, the easier it is, the more comfortable you're going to feel when, when you're asking for a favor. So approach the networking as though you're in a bank, you know, you're making deposits. You, you, you talk to people and you do what you can to help them and care about them and listen to them and serve them. And then when, they, when the time comes and you want to ask for a favor, then it, you're probably going to be okay. For some, it's going to be real quick. For some, it may never happen. So that's really depending on you and the relationship with that person and the nature of that person. All right. Well, those are all the questions we have in right now. Mike, do you have any last pieces of advice or tips about network networking that you'd like to share? Uh, other than get out and make it happen. Uh, you know, we talk about this. I mean, I would really uh, challenge you to say, okay, next week, in the next two weeks, I'm going to go to at least one networking event. Write something down. Make a commitment. Go do it. Take your friends. Split up with your friends when you're at the event. Practice, and then get back and talk about it and start doing it. 
because it's 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 the way things are done. It's the way jobs get filled. It's the way opportunities get presented. Once you're approaching it and thinking about things from a from a uh, growth kind of mindset and and making connections, you'll really be excited about the kinds of opportunities that present themselves. And you'll have so much to talk about and so so many different ways to connect. So it's it's scary sometimes getting going, but just go for it and. Uh, and it is the way it's done. You you need to uh, you need to do it. So good luck. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today and for sending in your questions. And thank you again, Mike, for your insight and spending time with us this afternoon. For our viewers, Absolutely. if you have any follow up questions or conversation about the program, please contact education at akci.org. Thank you.